between the life we see and the world we dream. There are stories when they are told. Nightmares become imagination. So please. <laughs> Thomas you aren't. Hello to the guild. My roommate is out of the apartment, so let's get this bitch started. Welcome to the Dim Light Anxiety Podcast. This is our maiden voyage, and I'm so glad you're here with me. People call me Giggles, which I'm sure you'll be able to figure out. I have two co-hosts, Peter Pan and Shadow. My cats! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you may or may not hear from them in this episode. They are known to play tricks, but they are also known to sleep, so we'll see how it goes. In a manic surge, I came up with a great idea to showcase people's fictional scary stories. So seriously, send me your stories. I want to read them all. My email is dimlight in sorry, let me try that again. <laughs> dimlightanxiety at gmail.com. Imagination is a terrible thing to waste, and I know your brain already comes up with some fucked up things. Well, at least mine does. So, I guess that only leaves us with one question. What's your story? Seeing as this is the first episode, we will start with one of my horrific creations. This one is inspired by the clown doll sitting on my mantle right now. He glares at the front door with his fixed smile and red lips to watch everyone who enters. The only question is, do they get to leave? Submitted for the approval to the Guild with Dim Light Anxiety, I call this story The Tale of Little Giggles. Jack was sitting with his roommate, scanning through a dating app, saying yes to every cute thing because fuck it, he's bored. Why the hell not? When he came across a pair of tits and only a picture of that, I mean basketballs. All her profile said was name, slay me. Description, I'm horny. Come find me. Bro, check it out. Um, yup. He swiped up and immediately matched. No fucking way. He presented his phone to his roommate. I'm totally in. The guys pounded fists and Jack walked away, carefully plotting his next move. He finally messaged after some deliberation. Hey, lowercase h, no period, no commitment. She responded, where do you live? I'll send a car. In disbelief, he brushes his ear-length blonde hair out of his gray eyes, already feeling the tug in his pants. What? Are you serious right now? Yes. Lowercase y, no period, no commitment. He couldn't type his address in fast enough. Dude, sealed the deal in less than a minute. She's sending me a car and everything. No shit. Be sure to take photos. Fuck it. Try to film it. No doubt. They skimmed their palms together and ended it with a finger wiggle then fist bump. Jack visited the sink for just a splash of water on pits and genitals, changed his shirt, then had a smoke while he waited outside for the car to arrive. It didn't even take the length of his cigarette for a dark car to pull up. He flicked the cig and stepped inside. Sick! Pushing every button in sight, Jack reverted back to his childish self, which is taking a huge leap, assuming he left. Where are we going? It won't take long, sir. Have you seen her? Is she as hot as her photo? Damn, I can't wait to bury my face in those tits, if you know what I mean. <laughs> they just look so full, I can imagine... Her bouncing up and down while she rides. We're here, sir. Oh, wow. That was fast. Wish me luck, bro. Jack held out his fist, but the driver continued to look forward. Jack just shrugged, 
and patted the driver's shoulder instead, which definitely felt colder than normal. The driver took off, causing the door to almost slam on Jack's arm. Well, fuck you too. He looked up and saw a half-basement apartment. Nothing outside to denote any personality at all to break up the drab concrete patio. There were flowers around the small apartment, but anyone could tell they weren't from her. Before he even had a chance to knock, the door creaked open. Yo, anyone here? He pushed to open the door and step inside the darkness. Before he could come to his senses and bail, the door creaked shut, and in front of it stood a brunette with her straight hair cascading down her back and barely clothed breasts. She was older than his usual conquests, and not as skinny as his typical type. The dim lighting barely hid the wrinkles in her cleavage, but he did love how the sheer black robe framed them beautifully. He stepped toward her, hand greedily beginning to rise when she smoothly moved to the couch, lit a match, and brought the tiny fire to the candle on the coffee table. With a light to lead him, he started following her to the couch. That's when he would have betted something dashed past the coffee table, extinguishing the flame. What the fuck was that? Jack demanded, beginning to wonder if this was even worth it. When it dawned on him, he didn't exactly know where he was. It was just the wind. I didn't know a big, strong guy like you could scare so easily. She cooed, relighting the candle. Are you going to sit down? She patted the cushion next to her. I won't bite, unless asked. She grinned. He checked around before he moved to her, still uncertain, proclaiming, I'm pretty sure I saw a shadow run by. Her eyes blank stare for a second, glimmering in the candlelight. She responds, That's my cat. Yeah. You have a cat? Hmm, what's its name? Um, Shadow? Is that a question? No, can't you hear it purr? It? Are you trying to purr? As if on cue, the candles blew out again from the suspicious shadow. What the hell is going on here? Does your power not work or something? Can we not get a damn light on in here? I guess you're the scaredy cat. I was just trying to create a mood. But if you insist, I can do lights on. She flipped a switch and the chandelier in the corridor flickered on. Seeing the room clearly for the first time, he saw all sorts of scary movie posters like Vintage Psycho and other ominous paintings. Seeing her more clearly as well, she was definitely 40, at least. But there was something dark and alluring about her appearance, even though her skin was ghostly pale. He was suddenly very aware they hadn't touched. Was she actually a ghost? Out of lustful fear, he grabbed her wrist, and in relief in feeling her warmth, pulled her into his lap and started nibbling her neck. He couldn't just, just couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching them. That's when he noticed the porcelain doll with bright red smiling lips sitting on the fireplace mantle. Why the fuck do you have that? Are you asking to be haunted? If I would have known... A guy so willing to climb into a random car would be this jumpy. I never would have invited you. What is it now? He gestured wildly at the doll. 
My clown doll? Yes, my drama teacher in high school gave that to me because clowns are also a theater thing, not just a biggest fear thing. She finished with a wink. I just have a thing about clowns. And I am trying to help you forget about that. Her soft lips devoured his and this almost worked until they heard the cabinet door slam in the kitchen. Jack looked to the fireplace immediately. Where the fuck did the fucking doll go? What the fuck is going on here? I'm so sorry. What? You knew about this? I'm so out of here. He threw her out of his lap and on her knees. She turned it to pleading while blocking the door. No, you can't. I just... I just had the house blessed a couple of days ago. I thought everything was fine. It was quieter than it has ever been. Please don't leave me here alone. I don't know if I can do this again alone. I'm afraid I won't make it through the night. I've tried everything, even leaving. And he just follows me. I can't escape. I... Can't escape. Jack, feeling ashamed for being such a coward all night, began to consider his actions. After all, he was six foot three, weighing 180 pounds, no, 185. And here was this woman, barely over five foot, asking him for help. He lifted her to her feet pushing her against the door in a passionate kiss as his tongue tasted the sweetness and serenity of her mouth, finally getting to run his fingers across her heaving breasts and squeezing. Then pulling away, he threw her aside and went for the doorknob. Before he could even touch it, something grabbed him by the ankles, and the lights all went dark. When he came to, the candle, which lit itself this time, flickered on the table, showing Jack dangling upside down from the ceiling. He could hear her crying in the corner, but couldn't see her. What was holding his legs? He didn't see any rope, but felt his legs bounded together so securely he couldn't even wiggle them. That's when he heard the cabinet door from the kitchen open and tiny porcelain footsteps approach from behind him. Click, click, click. Jack thrashed desperately from the waist up, trying to see, filling his arms so nothing could get near him. Flight was not an option. All he could do was fight or die. He continued to hear the shoes getting closer. Click click, click, and he became more frenzied. The candle blew out, and he realized what he thought was her crying was in fact laughing, a laugh that was then mimicked directly in front of his face. (laughs) Every light in the house flashed on, and he saw the bright red lips so close. The doll's red nose was now touching his. The clown reached around with a kitchen knife and ran it along Jack's throat, letting the blood pour into the clown's mouth, now full of razor-sharp teeth. The clown then began to nibble at Jack's open neck, hungrily tearing at the delicate skin. When he began to slow down, she turned and smiled grotesquely at Little Giggles. Did you get your fill? The doll licked his lips and crawled into her lap, still dripping blood. His big red nose and perfect smile once again 
frozen, staring up at her, pleased. Well, what did you think? Was it scary enough? Or better question, can you do better? Can you scare the laughter out of me? Now for the details. Any piece entered to be used on this podcast is agreeing that we can use that story for this podcast as we see fit. That being said, your piece might be mildly edited, mostly commas from what I can tell. We will always keep it as close to the integrity of the original as possible. Hopefully, they don't need to be edited at all, but I try to be as transparent as possible since we deal in creative lives, aka stories. <laughs> also, unfortunately, not every store can make it. Oh, did I say store? Not every story can make it into the podcast. So if you don't hear your story, that's because despite illusions, I cannot talk forever. Please keep sending them in, and I will read until my voice goes. There is no length requirements or limitation, as well as no limitations on numbers of entries. Please submit all entries to dimlightanxiety at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and even TikTok. Uh, our, my handle is dimlightanxiety as well. And one last bit. Please give us a like and follow and five-star review if you enjoyed today's episodes and hope to hear more. I know I would like to do more, so please help me out in that. Well, <laughs> that was fun. I look forward to another spooky week with you guys. Oh, and just because you stuck around through all the boring business portion, here's an update on our story. The next day, too early to be concerned about Jack. Jack's roommate is swiping and comes across the same set of tits. He also swipes up and matches. Fuck yeah. Ready for your close up? The real question? Is he? I declare this meeting of the Guild with Dim Light Anxiety closed. Until next week. Creep it real. <laughs>